So I got a comment asking how to track inventory if you have multiple different store locations. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to set that up. If you end up with any questions at the end of this video, check out the link in the video description below to the community post where you can discuss this video and download a template of what we create here today. So what I'm showing here is the simple inventory and I have a, a video that shows you how to create uh, what we have here. I'll link that right up at the top of the video screen here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify this to accommodate multiple stores. And so just to quickly review, we've got a products table. And so this is a list of all the different products. In this case, this is clothing stores. We've got t-shirts, pants, and hats. And then we've got a received table that logs all of the items that we receive into our inventory and then sold table that does the same thing for anything that is sold. And then we've got a customer table and an orders table. And we're not going to focus on the customer or the orders tables in this video. So going back to the received table, you can see that we've got a link to the product here. And so if I go back into products, I've rolled up all of the received products. So this is a total of all the green t-shirts that we've received. And then uh, same for the sold table. So we can see all the green t-shirts we've sold. And then this in stock just subtracts the received from the sold quantity. So in order to add multiple stores, the first thing we're going to do is to create a new table called stores. So I'll do that. And since I'm based in New York, I'm going to create some different store locations for New York City. So let's say Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, the Bronx, and Staten Island. And then I'm going to go ahead and just delete these example fields here. And so now that we've got a table that's a list of the stores, we can actually link this table to the received and sold record so that we know which store we're receiving or selling from. So I'll go into received here and then add a new field. This is going to be linked to another record. I'm going to link to stores. And you'll notice I left the field name blank. It's because when I create this field, it's going to name it stores for me, which is accurate. And let's pick some stores here. We'll do a few Queens entries, Bronx, and Manhattan. All right, now let's do the same thing for the sold table. So create a new field. This is going to be a link. And a fun fact, if I just start typing store, it's actually going to show me link to stores as an option. So that's just a little shortcut that we can use. And I'm going to actually untoggle allow linking to multiple records. We, we should have done that on the other one too, because we're only going to receive to one store per record and create field. Skip that. And so now we can also sell from these different stores here. Just put some dummy entries in. Okay, so now that we've specified which store that we've received things to or sold things from, uh, what we need to do is update our ledger that actually, you know, summarizes that all together. And so right now we've got just the total received quantity, sold quantity, and what's in stock. And honestly, I probably want to keep that. It's, it's probably going to be useful if you have multiple stores to have an overall ledger. And so I might just rename this to be all stores received quantity, all stores sold quantity, and then in stock, all stores. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to recreate these three fields for each store. So let's just do the Brooklyn store, for example. So I'm going to create a roll up field type. And this is going to roll up the received records the quantity received. But then down here, we're going to only include link records from the received table that meet certain conditions. And so I can now say where the store it has any of Brooklyn. And then it's only going to some received records that were uh, received to the Brooklyn store. So let's say we're going to call this Brooklyn received 
quantity. And then the last thing is we need to sum the values. So we're summing up all the record, all the received records that meet that criteria. So then we'll go and create that field and that's a zero. So let's go see if that's accurate. Yep. So we hadn't received anything from Brooklyn. If I now change this one to Brooklyn, then we should see in our products table that, yep, we have, right now we have a received quantity for green hats. So now I'm going to do the same exact thing for the sold quantity. And actually, if I just duplicate this field, I can rename it to Brooklyn sold quantity. And then we are going to change this to link to sold records and then pick the quantity. And then we need to clear the conditions since this is a different table, but then we can still do the same thing where store has any of Brooklyn. And then we're summing the values. Great. And so the last thing we need to do is create the in stock. So we'll say in stock Brooklyn. And then this is going to be a formula field type. And we'll take the Brooklyn received quantity minus the Brooklyn sold quantity. Create field. And I got a bunch of negative numbers because I must have said that I sold a lot of a lot of items from Brooklyn. I did, but I didn't say that I received any. So that's how we're going to get that. So maybe I'll add a, or I'll change a bunch of these to Brooklyn so our numbers look better. And if I go back here, now we can see our Brooklyn numbers. So we can do this same thing if we want to have all five stores represented. Then we'll just recreate these three fields for each of the other four stores and then we'll have our all stores record and then we'll have our ledger for each store here and then whenever anyone is receiving or selling product they're just gonna make sure that they fill out this field that says which store they're receiving or selling from and, and obviously you can require that in your form we'd update our form to have store here and require that and so that when you know anyone is entering a receiving record, they specify which store they're receiving it to. So that is how to track inventory for multiple stores. Like I said at the beginning, if you want to discuss this in the community, visit the link below. And in that same link, you can also download the template of what we created today. So you can just start there and customize it to your own needs. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.